through a couple tunnels on our way. And uh, it must be a great release for all the small towns and villages in this area because all of the heavy traffic going between the two countries, between the Czech Republic and Austria, uh, trucks, buses and cars don't go through these small towns and villages anymore, but they go on the highway and using the tunnels, so it must be a great release. And they also maintain the roads and the tunnels beautifully. Uh, so we come here quite often and we see all all of the work they do, maintenance around, uh, and they even wash the walls of the tunnels, so it's just quite impressive for us, coming from the Czech Republic especially. public and uh, you might have noticed in some of the media uh, they were talking about changing the name again to Czechia uh, which we don't agree with very much and I think the main reason for changing the name to Czechia was that they were saying that the Czech Republic is too long for the jerseys of the sport people uh, what a good excuse right but I think they even registered the name Czechia and that's what the sport people are going to use. Uh, but then we are still sticking to the name, the Czech Republic. And we don't like the name Czechia very much because we think it's too confusing with Chechnya, that it sounds just really similar. And also we have changed the names of our country so often that we would rather stick with the name, the Czech Republic. We kind of like it. And we really don't need to change our name uh, of the country that often. But really often, uh, our visitors on our tours, they talk about their relatives coming from this part of Europe, uh, late 1800s and early 1900s, and they would not talk about coming from Czechoslovakia or from the Czech Republic, but coming from Bohemia. And the reason is that at that time when uh, these immigrants were leaving uh, this part of Europe, they were leaving the Bohemian Kingdom and not uh, Czechoslovakia or the Czech Republic. And even today, the Czech Republic has three large districts or provinces, we could call it, and uh, the largest one is Bohemia. So the capital was already started by the Celts, and then uh, it became part of the Holy Roman Empire in the 11th century, with the first royal family called Przemyslovci, which is kind of a difficult name even for us to pronounce, and the first king, Przemysl Otakar I, uh, who was a really important Bohemian king, and uh, last year we had a beautiful anniversary for Charles IV because we were celebrating 700 years since he was born. So a lot of the towns and places in the Czech Republic had all kinds of different events and uh, celebrations for this big anniversary of Charles IV. And if you have been to Prague or maybe even from the TV, uh, you may know the Charles Bridge, uh, which is a beautiful stone bridge across the Vltava River. Uh, in Prague, and it's called the Charles Bridge because it was built by Charles IV. And then in uh, Prague, we have the Charles University. But 
monitoring the countries that are nearby, uh, so they take advantage of that. Really often we meet, especially the American students, coming uh, to Chisky Kromov for a day trip, and many of them come uh, from about the same time uh, in the centuries. But then early 1600s, uh, we went through the 30 years war, uh, which were similar fights, also the fights between Protestants and Catholics. Uh, which was kind of started over uh, in Bohemian uh, Kingdom, but then uh, it spread all around Europe and didn't affect uh, the Bohemian Kingdom that much. But uh, definitely the fights over religion of the Thirty Years' War uh, was quite bad uh, all around Europe. And then from mid-1700s, Maria Theresa from the Habsburg family was ruling the Habsburg monarchy. And Maria Theresa started some of the reforms, change done by Maria Theresa. But I have a daughter at home, and sometimes she's complaining about that, because they have learned at school that thanks to Maria Theresa, she has to go to school. And sometimes she doesn't like this fact. But I think it was a really good change that the girls, they have the same opportunities as the boys, and they can also study and go to universities and so on. But then the son of Maria Theresa, Joseph II, he started even more of the reforms. And some of his reforms were more popular than the others especially around the Bohemian Kingdom. So one of the really good reform was that he stopped the serfdom. You have to imagine until late 1700s, people were the serfs. So they had to work for the kings, uh, noble churches, monasteries, and so on. They really didn't have the freedom, and this was uh, changed uh, by uh, Joseph II, when people became free, and they could start moving from place to place and choose their jobs. So one of the good reforms. But the other reforms, especially around 